Streamers, are you ready to talk lighting? We are going to be talking about how your lighting can set the mood. You can get the best lighting for live streaming through the front lights, but also the back lights and everything else. So we're going to talk through all of that. But before I do, and yes, it's going to be lit, just as this whole week has been, it's lighting week. <laughs> Welcome, Jeffrey Smith, to the LSP family. Thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Awesome, awesome. Um, so <laughs> let there be lights. So hold on. I got to call this out. Because before we get into lighting, you all need to understand, Renee told me this morning it is International Dance Day, so everybody must dance at some point today. Can we all agree? We, we just, if you dance during the countdown timer, you did your thing. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, Amy, I saw your question. I am going to answer that in today's session, so be sure to watch the replay, okay? All right, everybody's agreeing. Cool, cool, cool. I love it. So if you haven't been watching all week, it is been it has been lighting week. So I encourage you to click on the playlist uh, to dive into some more stuff. <laughs> yes, dance sober <laughs> or not. Up to you. <laughs> totally up to you. <laughs> all right. Are you all ready to get this party started? <laughs> do you want the best lighting for live streaming? Well, of course you do. Lighting comes in many different forms and it is lighting week around here. So we have been covering all of the tips, the strategies, the how to's so that you understand how lighting works so that you can make the best possible choices for your setup. And today we're actually digging into how lighting can help set the mood. It can help create an environment. And here's the truth of the matter. When you are on video, you are creating what I call a universe. Why oh you, universe? Because of my whole uniquely you thing, right? <laughs> so that is what you are trying to accomplish with the background, the things in the background, but with the lighting itself. Your lighting can help create an environment that your audience immediately attaches themselves to or feels welcome in or understands kind of what the tone of your content is. So you can be, you can do a ton of amazing things when it comes to lighting. So I'm gonna give you some examples today and I would love, love, love for you to tell me if you're new in the comments by typing new. And if you don't know me then, or if you are new, then you don't know me <laughs> is how that was supposed to go. I'm Leia Petrucci from Live Streaming Pros where I help you create professional video that is uniquely you. And this is the show that we do in partnership with Ecamm, and that is my favorite Mac streaming software. But not just streaming software, recorded video, Zoom presentations, all of the things that you might wanna do, uh, you can use Ecamm for. And I have a full training series right here for you if you wanna learn more. You are not new, Greg. You can't say you're new if you're not new. <laughs> All right, so let's dig into lighting, right? Tomorrow, we have a Q&A panel with some of the people that I'm gonna show you examples for today. So when it comes to lighting, you see my light, my lighting setup, right? And if you were watching Lighting Week, or you, have, you can watch that playlist again on the replay, I have a light here, a light here, and a light here. Now my background is also very well lit. I wanted to start with a mood that was light, fluffy, and airy, and a home environment. I'm in a very small space. This is my living room. It is not a green screen. <laughs> and this allows me to set the tone by choosing the lights that I put in the background in addition to in the front, right? I wanted full on light on me. I didn't really want any shadows or fanciness when it comes to that because my personality is very like bubbly. And so I wanted to create that same environment in my video space. And so I have lighting kind of coming in over here, two different lights coming in over here. I have light, uh, that one's, yeah, that's on. Um, I have light uh, kind of separating that uh, bookshelf. I have light over here uh, on the plant. I have light coming in up, up from the top. So my video studio is very 
well lit, right? I'm lighting the space behind me and I'm lighting me from front. Now, again, I walk you through how I've set up my entire studio here. So you need to like think about what it is you want to create. Let me give you some other examples. Um, Mel, who's going to be joining us on tomorrow's uh, Q&A panel for lighting. You know, she has a very simple setup. She has a single light in front of her, and then she has the background lights. And she didn't go complicated at all. So if you're doing things like um, beauty, right, uh, beauty content, or you just want a well-lit, simple um, option, you can put a ring light in front of you and literally just use that ring light coming in to fill and make it kind of beauty, <laughs> beauty type of thing, right? Um, and then you can also use a soft box, soft box, re like a, a, a dome or a soft box can really help you um, make your, uh, make your face uh, kind of softer, right? The, the soft, soft light, softer kind of feel on your face. Um, and so this is a, one option, right? So you see how she's just bringing in the one light and we'll dive deeper into like the behind the scenes of these different setups tomorrow on Friday's show. Um, but then you also <laughs> turn, in order to be professional, turn off your, turn off your, your, your phone. <laughs> um, and so then you have the, uh, the lighting in the, in the cubes, right? And that sets the tone for her environment. Now, if we look at another option, um, this is something that you can do where, you know, obviously you're looking at the background specific items, but you see how he is highlighted with lights right here. You've got a single light on this and it's really kind of drawing attention to it. He could highlight specifically these different things in the background, but he's chosen not to. He's chosen to very specifically choose which things get highlighted. And you'll notice here, he's not using full light right? You see some shadows. This is an artistic thing and totally, well, totally okay, right? <laughs> so some people see that and they think they're, they're not well lit. It's actually an art, it's an art choice. <laughs> um, but his front, his, his desk is actually very well lit. Uh, you can see the products. He actually does. Uh, let me see. Oh, I didn't pull. I thought I pulled. So he actually has an overhead shot where he um, uses, you know, uh, where he demos certain things. And so that has to be well lit. Um, and then we go to Ryan. Oh, sorry. I didn't introduce him. This is, this is Chris Erickson. <laughs> he, uh, is from just another Chris and also, uh, our videographer as well. Then we have Ryan Dahl. Uh, he'll be joining us tomorrow as well. You get in the Ecamm community, know him well. Um, and so this is accomplished by a single light source in front. He literally is blacking out the background in this shot to create more of a story kind of feel, right? A very intimate storytelling type of feel and, and look. Um, so when you open up his stream and you, you, everything is blacked out except for him, it's highlighting that focus and, um, you can really like pay attention, you, you know, like when you, when you look at this, you just kind of like want to Okay, let's see what you got, <laughs> right? So like you can, if you're a storyteller, if you wanna create that moody, dark environment, this is an option. And, and again, tomorrow we're gonna actually go deep into um, how each of these people have their lighting set up. Um, and you could totally do uh, bulbs in the background, right? As, uh, as we have with Greg Corhan, right? And you have this same kind of, single light source coming in from the front, yet what he did was he built out the background and very specifically used lighting to uh, highlight those backdrop items, right? So you have a lot of uh, highlights here and he is setting 
the tone. He is a storyteller as well. And, you know, this is, um, he comes from the film production world. So he's setting that tone with everything that he's doing inside of the background. So single light source, but also in the background. Uh, great lighting. Yeah. I, I love Greg's uh, lighting. He, he always does that so very well. Um, and then I also want to show that now these two people aren't going to be on tomorrow's show, but I know that uh, Amy er asked earlier about lighting for uh, a demo space, right? An overhead cam. Kevin here, Kevin McAleer, has this as well. And he has this whole setup where he actually does projects. And you see it is kind of blowing out, right? Um, but it's not affecting his face because he's separated that space. Um, you can also see how he's used light in the background to keep it kind of open and lit but uh, also using some very strategic highlights along the way. Um, and so he's well lit here. And when he moves over here, he's got another camera and an overhead shot. And he can, you can uh, see him clearly lit as well. Uh, if you do have overhead cam shots, uh, one thing to consider is the, <laughs> um, is the fact that you know, you do need to uh, plan your lighting and test your lighting so that your lights are focused. Like, so you want to light the objects that you're that you're demoing on the table, and that lighting should um, not kind of reflect up here as much as possible. And so you would do that by the lights that you choose. You can see here, he's actually using a, um, a, a regular desk lamp, to be honest. Um, so it's not even a fancy light of any kind, but because it's dome shaped like that, it's actually moving most of the light downwards instead of splashing it. Uh, so if you use like an LED panel, that will actually cause you more flood, more flood of that light, right? Um, Okay, so uh, let's see. Yeah, he has a hair light too. Uh, I don't know which one you were asking about, Stephen. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know which person you were asking about on that one, but let me know. Um, and then we have Cindy Gay, who is also a student. And she, these are, so she does um, rug hooking, which um, is a very niche, you know, set up or a very niche audience. But these are all rugs in her background, and that is creating the environment that she wants her audience to tap into. These are, these are actual product that she sells in her store, and she is sitting here in her store. So in terms of lighting, she's very well lit. Her audience um, is not going to be attracted necessarily to a dark and moody environment. You got to know your audience. You got to know what kind of environment you want to create. Um, and so she's full well lit. And then her background is mostly lit, right? So she's, she's lighting that open space so that she can, so that people can see what's back there. Cause they're immediately going to know what that is. They're immediately going to be attracted to it and know that they're in the right place, uh, to learn and, uh, to learn about rug hooking and to um, be in that world and connect with similar community uh, members around that topic, right? So um, this is, you know, something that you can absolutely do. Uh, so know your environment. That is the strategy for the, to, to create the best lighting for live streaming. You've got to know the front and you've got to understand the back. And so as we look at lighting week, we've tackled the no lighting with window lighting, tackled one lighting uh, source, uh, two, three uh, light sources. And now we're talking about how you set that mood, right? So I want you to ask your questions. We're going to tackle Q&A here in a second. Just put Q in front of your question. But um, you, you want to make sure that you think through that. What is it that you want to invite people in to hear, see with your environment. And then you start creating the lighting choices based around that. And here's a quick, quick tip on how to do that. I want you to go out and to the world of YouTube or Facebook and look, just observe. I showed you a bunch of examples here, but look at what other people are doing and what is attractive to you and what's not. And you can really set the tone uh, by doing that. Now we do have a, uh, set, a, a set ideas PDF 
completely free if you want to learn about the actual pieces in your background that might help you put all of this together, right? Because lighting, uh, when you're thinking about lighting as a whole, you are thinking about the front, but you also got to think about how you're lighting different things in the background. And so that set ideas PDF will actually help you kind of get your brain space in order, get you thinking about what it is you want to accomplish. There's a worksheet in there for you to fill out as well. So that's at livestreamingpros.com slash ideas. And if you want to learn more, definitely uh uh, take a look at this playlist. It is going to walk you through everything you need to know about lighting, all the tips and tricks uh, for different sources and join us for the Q and A as well. All right. Uh, now we're going to go into Q and A uh, for the live peeps. <laughs> okay. I see lots of questions coming in. I want to go back to uh, Stephen Peters. Okay, sorry. So Stephen Peters, yes, Greg is also using, let me find Greg here. So Greg is also using a hair light, as you can see right here. So you can start, once you start learning how lighting works, you can actually start to understand how to, um, or how to pick apart what other people are doing. See this reflection right here, that indicates that hair light. Um, and so he's coming in, I believe he's coming in from the side. Greg, is this, we'll learn more about this tomorrow in the Q&A, but is this the um, lighting, that's that's not lighting your hair, that's too far back, uh, unless, it's, it's, unless it's a trick of the eye. <laughs> okay, let me ch tackle some questions here. Um, Andy, uh, can we submit a pic somewhere for a lighting critique? Uh, Andy, if you're in Streamer Accelerator, our membership, you can absolutely do that. That's what that's part of the benefit of Streamer Accelerator. Um, if you, you know, uh, are part of the Ecamm group as well, uh, you might find some uh, people willing to give you some tips there too. So yeah. <laughs> this is not a green screen. This is my living room. <laughs> so welcome to my living room. Yeah, every piece of this is physical. The plants are real, uh, all of it. And usually I go back there and like grab something out of it just to show you, but I'm, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, lots of photo tubers have studio tour videos where you can see how they light, bounce, shape, and cut to get their looks. Absolutely. So as you're going through that process of exploring what it is that's attractive to you and not, and maybe what you want to do in your own space, um, look for, if you see somebody you like on YouTube, then look for, like search their channel for studio tour. Uh, that's usually the word that they use, studio tour or just tour. Um, and that might uh, help. <laughs> the hair light is not coming from where you think. Tune in tomorrow. So what's going to happen on tomorrow's Q&A is the panel will have all behind, we will all have behind the scenes uh, cameras to show you. So you'll be able to see what it is you're looking at. And then you'll see the behind the scenes of how they have their, set, their video studio set up and which lights they're using. So, excuse me, hold on. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, I guess Greg will let us know and show us where that hair light is coming from. <laughs> uh, it seems that your desktop is in the middle of the room. How have you prepared the lighting? Uh, Steven, yes. So my desk is in the middle of my room. It's an 850 square foot loft studio apartment. Um, and I have a light here, a light here, and a light here. Again, tomorrow I will show that off um, but I also already showed it off um, yesterday on the Live Streaming Pros channels. So if you click the link in the description with the playlist, uh, you'll see a, you'll see all week we've been tackling lighting. So we've got um, a, a video with Ron Clifford on how lighting works, what you need to know about specular light versus soft light, uh, what you need to know about front lighting versus off to the side lighting. Uh, so yeah, you you want to make sure that you check that out. Um, let's see. Okay. And I would show you, but I did, actually did not connect my uh, behind the scenes camera for today. Phil Roy, um, how do you go about portable stream lighting when the person won't be so close to the camera? 
Philroy, that is potentially a big, co- like, I need more information on that. Philroy, can you tell me a little bit more? Because I can read that a multitude of different ways. And so I don't want to give you the wrong info. So uh, is it like cameras way far back and persons way far over here and you need to light them? Uh, is that what you're talking about or some other scenario? So just give me a little bit more details. Rob, any fill slash key light position tips for glasses wears? Yes, absolutely. Freaking lutely. Um, so in terms of glasses, and you would really want to do this regardless. Most people should lift their lights even if they don't wear glasses. Um, you can go direct on, but when you're wearing glasses, you definitely will get that reflection, right? And so if you lift up and point down here, you know what? Let me just hook up my behind the scenes camera since, since we're talking about this. Hold tight. I'm just going to go to uh, a little dance music. Hold on. Let's see. What do you want? Um, <laughs> catching fire. There you go. There we go. All right, so let me go to my behind the scenes camera. I didn't have this program, so hang tight. There we go. Uh, a little blown out, but um, <laughs> so you can see, I have, I'm standing here. Let me change the eyes there real quick. Hyper change. All right. So uh, you can see I'm standing here looking straight. My light is right here. Uh, my main light, and then the key light is up here. You see both of them are pointing down towards me, right? Um, so that that is what you want to do for any light when you're wearing glasses. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> <laughs> my behind the scenes skills are not as good for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Peter McKinnon, somebody said Peter McKinnon has lots of great videos, absolutely. Um, Love him. Jeffrey Smith, do you recommend a certain depth limit to your background slash object slash wall? The truth is you can work with anything. <laughs> we have students who have literally no room to work with um, and we've gotten them looking great. So that's always a possibility. Uh, if you want bokeh, like the depth of field where this is blurred out a bit, right? Uh, depends on how much depth of field or bokeh effect that you want, um, but you do need some space for that. Uh, that's just something to be aware of. But if you, um, if you want to like, uh, if you don't have the space is what I was trying to say. If you don't have the space to get that, you can still create. I mean, like, okay, let me go. I don't have a picture to show you. But, um, so some people, you know, uh, Dean Nimmin, if you go to his YouTube channel, like literally just has a wall. He's right up against his wall. He doesn't have a lot of space. Uh, he's in a, stuck in an Airbnb for the last year <laughs> in Mexico. And so he has to work with what he has, right? As do you in your space. So he's up against the wall and literally just light it. L it's lit with a single color LED and then it kind of creates this kind of ring effect and he still pops because he's well lit from the front. So yeah, um, that's, uh, hold on. I saw some questions. That's a big setup. So my setup is the, you know, the right size for me. I, oops, wrong button. <laughs> I'm always doing video. I'm live constantly. I'm doing video constantly. And I like this soft box because it is soft light, not specular light. And so that helps, you know, reduce the, the wrinkles. It helps, um, make it a little bit more like I have, a, like I have a beauty filter on. <laughs> don't, don't drink orange juice before your show. <laughs> Main light and key light. Great question, Jose. Key light is coming in from the side. It's a filler light. Uh, so like you see with this one, this is a key light right here. There you go. Okay, let's see. Do I dismantle my setup? You seem to have taken your entire room. No, 
Absolutely not. <laughs> what I teach you to do is to have a setup that you don't have to dismantle and set up. I do. Okay, I'm being corrected. Key light, sorry, you, I'm sorry, I answered you incorrectly. Key light and main light are the same thing. It's the filler light that, um, that is the side one. My apologies, thank you for that correction. Um, so the, uh, the, what was I saying? I was saying something. Oh, don't dismantle. The whole purpose behind everything that we teach in terms of setups is the party on switch, you just click and go so that you can make sure that you don't have excuses for not doing the work, right? That is so, 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 so important. Um, if you do a lot, like if you are if you do it like once in a blue moon, then that's not so bad. But if you have a, a regular like couple times a week uh, kind of setup that you need to be doing video or live, that is very, very important. Uh, sometimes the lighting is harsh on the eyes. I do gaming streams, they're really long. So if you're using LEDs, that'll help. Uh, but also if you lift up and point down, that will help as well. If you have direct light coming from you right in front, that's going to be harsher on your eyes. So um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't wanna put those wires, I don't wanna deal with those wires constantly, right? <laughs> Actually, not a big fan, Paul. Not a big fan, to be honest. Sorry. I'm sure I'm disappointing several people right now. Um, I am building my own studio and thinking about a good setup, like Leanne says. We're thinking about a ceiling with built-in daylight lamps which I can turn off and on. Um, uh, would you recommend that? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so what I hear you saying is that you're going to be using like, like I have pot, you can't see my ceiling, but I have like pocket lights. Um, and so you're thinking about doing daylight bulbs in those pocket lights uh, in the ceiling. That is not going to give you the lighting that you want because um, here, actually, let's do a little demo. I'm gonna turn off my lights. I should have had, uh, <laughs> I should have had her here today, okay. Let's see, I'm gonna turn off my light. I have a pocket light right here, so I'm gonna go turn that on, turn on some music here. Ready? All right, so this is, <laughs> This is what you get when you're under a pocket light, a ceiling light, okay? This is not a good look. <laughs> it can be daylight, it can be whatever light. Um, and so you would have to like, then kind of get, see how it's creating shadows? If all you're using is ceiling light, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get these deep shadows. Uh, you're gonna get really harsh harshness there. It looks really, really bad. So you don't want to rely on that. It's too far away in the ceiling to actually give you the light that you want. So um, they don't call them hot pockets, <laughs> hot pocket lights for nothing. Exactly. So yeah, uh, definitely don't want to do that. And hopefully that demo gives you an understanding of why. Going back to dance break, since it's International Dance Day so that I can get my lights back on. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Leanne, um, I don't know if you're still watching, but I would love to hear if that helped you as well. Yeah, Pocket Kelly wasn't here today. I didn't think I needed her. Uh, John Mowers says, I'm curious if you're sitting at a high desk or counter, are you on a high stool? Are you uh, immediately at a wall? How far is your camera from your face? Is a real room or a set? <laughs> your setup appears to be uh, a large spare even in front of you. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, hold on, going back, let's go to the demo. All right, I'll show you what I got. So, can you hear me? I'm not sure you can. <laughs> Okay, so this is my set. This is my whole living room right here. Um, and that's about 13 feet uh, between my desk. And it is a tall desk. You can see the wall. Uh, I know that's crooked because that wasn't set up for this shot. <laughs> um, 
and so it is a tall desk. I do, I don't know if you can actually hear from this screen. So I have this much space uh, going back to there. All right. <laughs> Could y'all even hear me? <laughs> I was talking to you. I'll repeat. Oh, no, I didn't get this light on. I turned it the other way. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. So repeat what, what I was saying was 13 feet between me and the background. That is a real background, real set. Uh, I am at a tall desk. And when I don't feel like standing, I prefer standing because of the energy flow. But if I don't I feel like, uh, then I have a tall bar chair that I can sit down on. All right, there we go. Uh, Success Academy, I am using the Sony a6100 with a 16 millimeter f1.4 lens. Okay. Pedro, uh, does the overhead light need to be directly overhead or can it be in front? Uh, or would it be it, or would being in front cause bad shading? No. I want you to watch that video that we have in the playlist uh, with Ron Clifford about lighting. Uh, it's like a 13 minute video and we talk all about that kind of stuff. But to break it, to break that piece down, uh, lighting in front can absolutely be a beautiful uh, thing to do. Uh, lighting it coming, you know, up and up and down uh, can give you a really soft uh, light and kind of more of a beauty type of light. Uh, bringing it off to the sides helps um, helps you give give a little bit more sculpture to your right. See how I have like this. Um, you know, you can kind of play around with little shadows there. Um, oh, uh, you're, I am on f1.4 right now. Yes. Um, but like you saw what it looked like without lighting. So it's not just the lens, right? You got to have that lighting to, 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 for the lens to work with. <laughs> Let's see, Andrew, Facebook allows for streaming at 720p, but your stream quality is so sharp as if it's streaming at 1080. Is it due to camera or lighting? So uh, I thought, I don't know if we have 1080. I, so Facebook does allow 1080, but I don't know if we have this that on our page at the moment. But here's the thing you need to know. I am streaming at 1080, right? But I have all of the pieces of the puzzle that are creating a sharp look. So I call it the tech chain. And I have a video on the Live Streaming Pros YouTube channel all about the tech chain. It is very important that you understand that you, in order to get the best possible quality, all of the pieces have to be the best. Not the best. Sorry, I said that wrong. Um, I don't want you to think that you have to spend a whole bunch of money. Um, but all of the pieces have to be um, good. And if you have a weak link in that chain, then your quality isn't going to look as sharp, right? Uh, I, I do stream at 60 frames per second. I like how that kind of gives a, the extra little pizzazz um, and sharpness, but uh, you don't have to. A lot of people do uh, prefer 30 frames per second. You have to, you have to choose what you prefer. Um, and so for me, I do stream at 60 frames per second. Sometimes that's why people are like, why is it so sharp? Yeah, you're welcome, Jose. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. If you go to livestreamingpros.com, no, yes. If you go to livestreamingpros.com slash GLN, John, I have all of the links to what I use and a, a diagram as well. Uh, so GLN for go live now. That's this show that we're doing today. Uh, so livestreamingpros.com slash GLN. In, we'll have all of those uh, details about what I use. Okay, Jose, I just answered you on the aperture. Sammy, use one main light. Is that fine? Yeah, you can totally get by with one main light. Um, and that's what we're going to actually show tomorrow. So this, Ryan, single light source. Unlike uh, Greg, who's cheating with... <laughs> A key with a, a, a hair light. Um, Ryan actually has uh, a single light source. So, you know, that's going to understand that when you stream, when you do a single light source, if it's off to the side, you're going to wind up with those shadows. If it's from the front, you're going to get more of a filler. 
a filled outlook, I should say. No. Uh, no. So, Fabu, I, I, that's what I teach is solo streamers. So I do it all myself. Uh, and I teach that inside of my studio workshop as well, uh, where we walk you through. By the way, uh, some fun updates are coming soon uh, to that studio workshop. And uh, I use the Stream Deck. This allows me to actually have a solo stream run really, really smoothly. So I use Ecamm live for the software and then the stream deck connected to that so that I can push all my buttons and I don't have to have any producer whatsoever. Yes, some new updates. I haven't told you about that yet. Oh, <laughs> which front camera are you using right now? It looks killer sharp. Yeah, it's the, um, it's the Sony a6100 that I'm using that, that uh, the, yeah, the autofocus works really well. <laughs> Sometimes if you get too close, it doesn't. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So uh, your tech coach just posted it. Six, A6100 with the Sigma F16 millimeter F1.4 lens. Also coming up, uh, we're working on a video about lenses. Um, and that's going to definitely help you guys understand which lens you should get. Lenses are a very confusing thing. And so we really want to make sure that you have... Um, the information at hand, don't just buy what I buy because I bought it. Like I want you to make your intelligent choices for what works for your space, for the environment that you're trying to create. Um, <laughs> it's the Peloton update. <laughs> um, I do have a team, but not, but not running my production. I think that that's what they were asking. Um, but I do have a team for uh, a lot of the other stuff or like, a ton of the other stuff, like in terms of running the business. Um, I'm here. I'm late. I brought tacos. No, you're not. It's either eggs or it's either eggs or cookies. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Caleb, I have a front ring light with it above my head and tilted down. Good picture. Awesome. Perfect. You know, like that's something that you can absolutely do. Um, yeah, you can play around. Uh, we have a video on the autofocus choices and settings, uh, but you can play around if you're having trouble with autofocus. The 5100 doesn't have quite the same uh, fast capabilities when it comes to the autofocus uh, as the 6100, um, but you can play around with the settings on that one to get the fastest possible. Uh, there are different choices in those settings. All right. Um. <laughs> Yes, Lynn's video. Can't wait. Me either. Abby decided she... Hi, you're getting some water. <laughs> I'm always like shocked when Abby gets up during the show. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, it's so cute when she drinks. I'm even later than Matt, but I'm eating pizza. Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, was this a helpful video? What did you, uh, what did you learn um, tomorrow? Definitely. So before tomorrow's stream, here's what I want you guys to do. Okay. I want you to put on your calendar tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific for the Q&A uh, about lighting. I want you to, before that show, I want you to watch the playlist because we have one, well, all day, every single day this week, we have released a, a video about lighting. So we have four. I had to count. I don't do live math. Counting live is not a thing that I should do. Um, but we have four videos in that playlist right now, the fifth one coming tomorrow. But if you watch that whole playlist and then you'll have more, you'll have the, you'll have the ability to ask questions based on the information you learned. So I would love for you to do that and join us tomorrow for sure. Um, I learned update lights before camera. Do you, oh, like if you're going to purchase something, go, go for that. Yeah. No, my 6,100 does not overheat. Are you using a dummy battery? Uh, that's the first thing to know. Uh, you definitely want to be using a dummy battery. Basically, that's just a battery that plugs in that has a cable coming out of it that plugs into DC power. So if you do that, uh, there you go. Uh, it likes to focus on my background a lot. Then I'm out of focus. Okay. So you might, if you're, I don't know what your video looks like, but there's, that can happen if, um, if one, you move around a lot, like where you, you're, it's trying to find that focus. Uh, it is a slower focus for sure. Um, but you can do that by going manual 
focus if you don't need it to be focusing on uh, anything in particular. You know, like I like when I'm kind of being able to hold up something like the Stream Deck, right? I like that focus. Um, but if you don't need that, then you could always just go into manual focus as well. All right. <laughs> Dummy battery is a lifesaver. It really, really is. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Is that, are we done? Are you good? Is that, is that all the questions I got from you? <laughs> um, sorry, one more miss that I missed. Has anyone seen any really narrow spotlight sort of fixtures if you want to light up one object in a scene without lots of spill tighter than barn doors? sorts of fixtures. Um, hmm. I'm going to let the community uh, look at, uh, see if they, okay, it looks like some, some options coming through in chat for you on that one. Uh, I, I'm, I think I understand what you're asking, but I, I think what you're trying to do is like get really, really narrow focus um, in that, in that lighting. Um, but you're not going to have the barn doors. So you, like you would have a specific light for that, uh, not just using the lights you already have. Alrighty, <laughs> you guys come with your questions tomorrow for our panel and enjoy the playlist and check out the light, um, the set ideas PDF if you need some help assembling all of the things together because that's going to, to really help you put, um, put it all together. And Matthew, every day this week has been awesome. Thank you, Sonia. Love your videos. You're helping me so much. Woohoo! I'm so happy to hear that. Awesome. All right. It's International Dance Day, so put those dancing shoes on and let's dance this baby out. Thank you so much for hanging today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.